Okay, uh, while waiting for everyone to get into the Zoom room, uh, Architect Wicket will be helping me at uh, uh, those who are slightly coming in late. Okay, again, I would like, uh, like to remind everyone of our usual house rules. Okay, keep yourself muted for the whole duration of the speaker's presentation. You may unmute yourself during the Q&A session or in case the speaker wants to interact or engage with you or he has a question. Uh, the Q&A session will be right after the presentation of our guest speaker. Uh, you may also use the chat box to type in your question or the raise your hand icon if you want to ask your person other question personally. Okay, today we are very fortunate to have our final distinguished guest speaker for the ADP Lecture Series 2. Okay. Um, to give you a short um, introduction okay, of, about our guest speaker, uh, I would like also uh, to share the objective of the ADP Lecture Series. Okay? The ADP Lecture Series is a platform to expose students to real-world learning by engaging them to distinguish guest speakers' expertise through their design works, practices, philosophy, research interests, and advocacies. The lecture topics are aligned to the themes and the focus of the studio. Likewise, aid and inspire students in the development of their final design project. Okay, I would like everyone to give a warm welcome to our guest speaker. But before we, I pass this, the uh, screen to him, uh, I would like to give a short introduction about our guest speaker for today. Okay, architect Adrian de Assis is an architect and educator, a partner of AR Rad um, Architects and ARN Consulting and Training. He graduated from UITM in 1997 and Oxford Brooks, UK in Architecture and Urban Design in 1999. Upon returning to Malaysia in 2000, he has been heavily involved in various projects, including placemaking projects for local authorities. As a certified trainer, uh, Architect Adrian is a regular on architectural knowledge sharing platforms such as BEAR, LAP, RELAP, and BPW for the last decade, for the last 10 years. By his many seminars and industry related programs, he was in instrumental in grooming more than 400 registered young architects in Malaysia. Architect Adriante is also the chairman of the PAM Malaysia Education Committee. 2021 to 2022, and a deputy chairman of ACAE, Art Asia Committee for Architectural Education or Architecture Education. He is a sought after speaker, both locally and internationally by his own local TV program, Project Laman Urban. He educates public on the importance of place making, armed with a strong passion to discover, inspire, invent, innovate, Architect Adrianta hopes to continue contributing to the society to, this, to, his best, to the best of his ability. In his uh, lecture for today, which will be our last and final lecture for the AD Lecture Series 2, will be focusing on visual communication, uh, effective visual communication. Okay, again, a warm welcome to our guest speaker, uh, Architect Adrianta Assis. Okay, architect Adrianta, uh, let me start as soon as you're ready. Thank you so much. All right, all right, all right. Thank you, Prince. Thank you for your introductions. So I shall share my screen here. Let me go it. So I can see all the students of Taylor's University. So committed. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. All right. Thank you so much um, for inviting me. It's a, such an honor. And I'm so glad to see all the students, I shall call all, all of you as a future architects. Uh, and then for sure, Talis University is one of the best universities in Malaysia. So um, you should, should be proud of yourself that you're studying in Talis University. And thank you for the introduction from Prince. And then as myself has been spelled out for my short biography, again, I'm the architect and half of myself as educator. And I love to meet people. I, my architecture lately is more to serve the community. <laughs> also, that I'm on behalf of PAM, Putubuhan Architect Malaysia, Malaysian Institute of Architects under the chairmanship of Education Committee. 
and also a media and publication uh, for the PAM institutes, for their websites, for their publication, for their magazines. And also on behalf of Lembaga Architect Malaysia, Board of Architects, uh, as a accreditation maps committee, and also media and publication. So it looks like it's a good topic about me now to share to the students. Uh, yeah, I heard that uh, among our friends been invited before. So today will be my la last, yeah, the last lecture series too. Uh, Mr. Emmanuel Mani, thank you so much, my good friends. Uh, when he called me that, you know, I should share this uh, topic about effective visual communication to all the students. Well, I, I hope that all the students can be, you know, ready with a good coverage. I know it's after lunch, everybody will be sleepy when listening all these lectures through online, but I do my best, yeah, to, to share this. Uh, and then I start to restart my setting timing here. All right. So first of all, I just shared to all the students here uh, that recently, I think I can't remember a few months back when I posted my quotes by saying that students need to find the best platform to improve their skills, not just theories, but to refine their communication skills and ready to market themselves. Or oh, I hope you can understand what means by this, because talking about architecture, if you don't have these communication skills, I think there's a pointless. Even you have a beautiful design to sell off, but if you cannot talk to about your design, I think that's pointless. So I know everybody start to be busy now. The campus has been commenced. I heard that has been conducted by physically and to hybrid, but don't be busy, but be productive. So let's loading productivity, gain positive energy with a positive mindset. Uh, so always remember, start to call yourself that you are the architects of tomorrow. All right, so this is your dreams. Yeah, students, this is your dreams to become an architect. So now start talking to yourself now that you are an architect now. But to begin with, let me share with you life and architect. As you can see that, you know, for sure, we can't run away from, from those papers, from those tools that our, you know, daily working, I mean, is his reflection actually. I know everybody facing this, especially during lockdown, during pandemic. I know everybody keep busy studying from home, learning from home, working from home. But to be the truth that architect couldn't run away from all this situation. We have to be strong. We have to be resilient. We have to be positive. Because all of us, I can tell you that architects are intelligent. We are funny people. We are attractive. So yeah, eat, sleep, design. We can say that a lot of challenges that we're facing, like, you know, uh, not enough sleep, studying 24-7. Uh, well, all these challenges, I can say, it, is a part of our life now. You know, you know what I mean? But to tell you, the most challenging part that I would like to declare as an architect working in industry, I think about designs, about how to manage the contract, how to deal with the local authorities, you know, you, you, you know, from building bylaws, all regular regulatory requirements. Uh, but the most challenging part is about dealing with people. This, this is my opinion. You know, when talking about dealing with people, the most important part is about you have to be, you know, punctuality, uh, you have to be disciplined. But I will share with you that, you know, people like us, you know, we are multitasking. Versatility. This is why I show this image to all of you. You have to believe yourself this, because we can. Uh, architecture is a, the for me is the most beautiful career, because it's not only talking about designing building, designing spaces, but we can do beyond that. You know, you can discover that architects, you know, can end up become uh, publicators, can become editors, or maybe you can become lecturers, can become professors, but. Surprisingly, I, I can I observe many graduates out there. They can end up become a good graphic uh, designers. They become a conservator. They become heritage specialists. They become tourism architecture. More than that, I heard lately. I saw they become a, a good chef in the restaurants. You know, they can bake a cake. Oh wow! Is architecture can do beyond that? But we have image here, students. So. To become an architect, this myself in the office, 
we always discuss with the team. You know, we you always talk. You know, we always to convince people. And then don't forget, we're having fun together when we went to the site together and then come back to the office, working together with the team. <clears throat> and then you talk to many stakeholders, especially if not only for client, to contractors, suppliers, uh, and then local authorities, officers, a lot more. But for me, this is enjoyment life. You should go and have fun. Yeah, even though you heard that architect is nerdy. No, architect is the most diligent person. So beside that, um, even I'm a professional architect uh, handling a few jobs, but I also serve to society that I conducted a class like a professional young architects so that we can, you know, they can go further about their professionalism. But I went through uni many universities and some of the people say that they told me that, wow, at Renta, you already spent more than 1,000 hours. See, you know, I feel like, wow, is it? You counted that? Well, um, not only to universities, but even to the school, secondary schools as well, you know, to indi indication about the understanding about architecture. So, meaning is it, architects, you need to market yourself, not only about design, even on papers, but through, through yourself, because you bring image as an architect. So architecture is like a, it's like a role model because we represent society students. As you can see that I, I went through many years to meet people, not even through to students, but I went to, to meet a community out there. You know, even I spoke to the teachers, how, how's the, the young minds they're thinking right now. In fact, I put in some, a lot of creativities to think into the architecture. So again, students, for me, I, I'm, I'm, I can tell you I love this career because architecture is not only about designing things, but we meet people. So this one of my partner under my training company called ARN, we even participate and take uh, as a certified trainers so that we can become uh, trainers so that we can speak legally, you know what I mean? So this is one of the tests when I participate this this uh, training of trainers, can you imagine that I choose Star Wars to represent in 20 minutes how to communicate with the juries, how do you want you to spell out in the presentation in 20 minutes? So imagine that. <laughs> so recently last week, I've been invited as a, one of the speaker in data in front of, I heard about nearly 900 uh, participants came over uh, with a lot of Malaysian uh, speakers, architects as well. It was, it was interesting. Uh, for me, it's, a, it's the best experience that I shared my works, my contribution to society in the different kind of presentation. So normally people do a slight presentation, but this, when last Saturday I went there, I make a video presentation with the, uh, a soundtrack background and then I narrate it on the stage and end up somebody took a picture that, because when I say that rise everybody, we should be proud of ourselves that we are Malaysian architects and it becomes epic, one of the epic <laughs> footage here. Well, okay, students, I hope you can relax yourself, open up your mind because this lecture is about our mission statement. It's about communications, very, very essential. So you have to remember, the end of this lecture, you have to remember, uh, understand the learning outcome is how important about this communication skill and knowledge. And you make sure how to prepare your presentation, the styles and the methodology to understand the effective of communication. And you have ex exchanged your thoughts and message by speech, showing a signals or maybe through light, writing. And also you have to express yourself in such way that you have clearly understand and personality to traits connect to be better and better and really hope that you can improve your skill in convincing. And then you have to clear mind on how important of architectural communication. For me, Morris Prani is about to be better, a quality, healthy and happy architects. So I hope we shall begin with our intelligent core team. It's about our mindset. I understand, I used to become a student like you before. We face a lot of challenges, but somehow rather, when you have a positive mindset with a growth mindset, make sure you mix around with the positive people. So as you know that our mindset, we have a growth mindset with a fixed mindset. 
But for me, let's. I hope that you can browse through what means by intelligence quotient and your emotional quotient and also your spiritual quotient. This is about IQ, EQ, and SQ. So as an architect, you have to remember we are all intelligence people, but we are normal human being. How to taking care of your emotional and do understand spiritually. So I hope you can browse this because you have to remember that we architects, we are an artist as well. So we have a hard skill and soft skill. Go and discover this. You know, what is a soft skill that you need to improve? You need to looking at because I can see that many students now you have a hard skill, but your generation suddenly to see the soft skill. So I hope that you can remember this that sooner or later you will be a future architect to serve building industry, to serve country. Let's begin with the, the imagination. You need to dream big now. Remember this. When you have to set your dream, make sure you believe it. Belief come true and end up with the achievement. Finish, 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 finish. Wow. Sorry. You know why? Because I consider ourselves now as a dream maker because we're going to make a client's dreams come true through us. We as an interpretation. So if you want to be an architect, then start from here. Okay, keep calm because you need to be cool and tell to yourself, you know, keep saying to yourself that you are future architects become. Well, talking about the concept, so let me share with you how as students who want to be designed, the reason I make it flip because it's a reflection. It's like looking to the mirror. Yeah? So when you look to yourself as a student, for example, most of the lecturer ask you, what is your concept? A simple words, maybe a concept as an idea, but something to form your mind that through your, no, uh, your notions and your representation by putting all the solution, how to solve the issues and driving a force, any project so that you can identify your work. I hope you can understand this. If you don't understand, you can ask during our Q&A session. But designing is a thinking. But not only thinking, you have to make visualize. So design, even though it's so simple, but that's why it was so complicated. <laughs> so a simple concept, but hard to forget. So you want that. You make sure you make it. Yeah, some of the people, you know, believe on Miss Venero said less is more, or maybe you can say less is only more, but where more is no good, sometimes students can make it overreaction. But go back to the fundamental. The difference between art and design, art is about related to our feelings. Okay, when talking about design, it's about principles. So believe it or not, all of you students, you are an artist because your arts will speak where words are unable to explain this. So for me, it's a, it's a journey of our soul, a free soul. So go back to the fundamentals that I'm sure all of you know the principles of designs. And then of course, the elements of design. I have to say that because to bring balance, you know, so to become impartial, because some of the students when they start to design, they forgot about the fundamentals. Because of the fundamental, you can give you a spark to begin with your presentation. And of course, your creativity. So being creative, you have to be inspired and then start to unlock your originality. So another fundamentals, when you start to present your, 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 your works, you know, go back to the, 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 the list of the where, what, who, why, when, and how. You're going to have a list so that you can uh, give a spark, a dialogue for you to present your presentation. A uh, very simple, when you look to, you make your list down, what is what, your project, which, where is your site, who is your stakeholders, when this thing happened. When you start to list down, it will make you a guide to do your presentation. But trust me, this is the most beautiful part, it's about the process. You know, by preparation, incubation, illumination, verifications with a strategy. Because 
some of the students, the, you know, they, this is our enemy, see, the time. So make sure your time management is a life management because whatever you do now in the universities, it will be reflections to the day tomorrow. So make sure you're taking care of your time, manage your time so that it will be capital to any, any human being has the only thing he can afford to lose by Thomas Edison. And I know studying architecture, people say that, wow, it's a 24 seven nonstop. Who said that? If you manage your time, you're gonna be enjoyable. You can be manage uh, uh, another activities that you can do that. That's why I can say that to become an architect, if you can do management of time, you can do beyond than that. And then having fun with your own patient, patient. So students start to do your planner. Some of you need to do this. In fact, you can paste it into your one of your board presentation you, so that you can explain to your lecturers how you manage your working program. I hope you can take this on this. When you do your planner, you can manage your time. And then when, can you imagine that when you showcase your, your time planning to your lecturers, I think your lecturers will give maybe consideration that, wow, you manage your time. How many weeks you for, for your uh, project? I heard that about 14 weeks. So how you manage your time, follow the program. You know, when, when you have uh, the, this time program, the reflection now, when you become an architect working in a big industry, we kind of run away from the work program. So I, I want to encourage all of you do a work program so that during this time as a student, when you start to familiarize to the work program, it will reflect to yourself when you start to working in the building industry. For sure, when you're talking about timing, when you're talking about the activities, there will be an episode, how to say this, better three hours too soon than one hour minutes too late. Imagine this. I will explain more about this because when you have to make a good management, a good time, it will bring you the elements of ethics. Uh, you know, you are a strategic person. You've been motivated. You can work as a team. You make a vision clearly, and then you become truly a leadership. Because this is what we can say that when you become an architect, we have a responsibility. This is what Uncle Ben said to Peter Parker. When we have a great power, there will must also come with a great responsibility. To become an architect, we have a huge responsibilities, especially on the professionalism uh, responsibilities, contractual responsibilities, statutory responsibilities. And lastly, it's about moral responsibilities. The other way we call it duty of care. But again, students, knowledge is power. Of course, you know, some of you, I heard your generation, your you know, I, I, I even observe they don't love hard copies, but architects, you cannot run away from hard copies. Go and browse a lot of reference of books. Uh, I'm sure that you need a hard copies because your generation love to have this, this, this you know, your, your things in the pockets. But go and browse this so that you can hold it, you can see it, you can touch it, you can smell it even. You know, the, the reference have to be most essential in our life especially all the, the things that I show here, metrics, handbooks, architecture elements, even you can go beyond that. This is one of my favorite uh, reference, the art of war. Uh, not only about architecture reference, but I read art of war because I want to strategize my project, how to set my team, how to set the timing. Uh, this is a good reference for me so far. Well, set a good mindset because a self-discipline is very, very important here. Because don't expect success, my dear students, where there is no discipline. Yeah, goals cannot be achieved without discipline. So I don't say that you have to be very, you know, timid. But you, when you discipline yourself, make a new culture in your life, so your time will be managed. That's why I need to share with you that students, let's say your deadline is on Thursday. And then your Thursday is your deadline. No, actually, if your deadline, if your submission date is on Thursday, your personal deadline is supposed to be on Tuesday, two days before. You know, when you're taking a flight, you have to be two hours before departure. When I said two days before the submission date, so that you have one day for your contingency plan, for example, that when you go to printing shop, something, you know, error happened, and then you at least will have one day to make your plan B. 
I'll give a simple example. So I hope that you can ask me during Q&A, what means that two days before the submission date? Because if it wasn't for the last minute, nothing would ever get done. You know, especially people like us, I always say that we are the last action heroes. Because the last minute, the adrenaline rush will be coming up to the sky and then we could become so active. But if you can consider yourself that plan your work and work with your plan, I think you'll be all right. Because we don't want to hear some a cliche uh, reason when you, the students say, oh, Mr. Prince, Mr. Emmanuel, I'm so sorry, my laptops crash. Or This is very common, common reason. If you can't take in care of your all the tools, all your gadget, make your safe files, hard drives, and then, you know, if you really want to be crashed, then show how to be crashed. So make sure, I know your logistics, this is very common for the students. Even I used to be living as a student with my friends before our, our studios, it was so messy, but you need to be healthy as well. You need to be disciplined. You need to be have a good environment in your studios. You know, you can listen to your music, but be careful taking care of your ergonomics. You know, when you're working with your team, you can be working in the studios or even at home even, make sure working in the good environment. But for me, I need to share with you, if you work as a team, this is what we call team, together, everyone achieve more. So that's why I encourage my secret recipe. Even I am sure a lot of people say that you need to have the mentor mentee program. I need to declare to you, I was so lucky when I was 16 years old, I had a mentor. He the one who guide me, motivate me, uh, you know, make sure I have a clear projection. So he asked me why you want to be, I love arts and then he guide me to become an architect. So when you have a mentor mentee system, it will make more meaningful with a successful training, optimum work and inspiring. So do a go and find your mentor. When you have a mentoring system, you become motivated, you got an advice. I'm sure you need a clear direction, have a coaching system, support each other to achieve goal. You know, this is what we call uh, a symbiosis. Because we need each other so that we can recap, be active and passive so that we can you know, I'm sure that become more active with a meaningful of life. Well, eat, drink, sleep, dream, bath, walk, see, think, hear, breath, feel, smell. Oh, it's about architecture. But I'm sure that nobody's perfect here. Nobody's perfect. Who can tell me that next week is your submission? And then you tell to your lecturers that, Sir, Mr. Prince, Mr. Emmanuel, I done my part already. No way. You were always in the last action heroes. So, you know, whatever it is, what I'm trying to say, enjoy your study because studying is life. But communication skill today is the most essential because the way how you talk is different where the way how you speak. Very weird. <laughs> because sooner or later, when and in the studios, you need to explain, you need to convince. But before to explain and convince people, you need to convince yourself first. You, know, you, you have to make yourself understand your words. So communication is a, is a I can tell you, is an information medium. Uh, you know, you've got a lot of platform to communicate. But for me, if you can explore how to communicate yourself first before you convince people. Believe it or not, as an architect, we are a type, this type of learners by visual, because I'm sure it is by reflective. All our generation here, when you start to Google, the first thing you press is images, because the way you're reading pictures. But don't forget, you need to be active. When you look by visualize, you need to be verbal to explain it. So do discover the type of learners, because all of you will not be the same because you have to identify what type of learners you are. Are you a type of visual learner that you always learn by, by seeing or kinesthetic learner that you always do the thing? Or maybe you are auditory learner, a quiet type of people but only listen what they hear. Go and browse this because when you identify what type of learners you are, then you know the types of your intelligence. 
I hope you can browse this, my dear students. Go and find out what type of intelligence you are. When you can understand and identify what type of intelligence you are, then you know what type of learners you are, what type of architects, designers you are. Because the way we see are totally different when we look or watch. I hope you understand this. You know, the way we see, the, the way you look at, or the way we watch, is totally different approach. I hope you understand this. Even when you hear or even you listen, it's different. There's a difference between hear and listen. Can you notice that? Or even you can pay attention to a sound that you want to hear. I hope you can catch it this time. Because you need to browse this so that you can identify the type of learners then you can move on and then you can identify what is your weakness. Because I can tell you, students, nobody's perfect. So when you have a weakness, how to counter your weakness? Brush up your weakness or camouflage your weakness and portray your expertise. But this is the one that I post a lot of my observation from the student that they start to become hesitation, they become you know, fickle-minded, you know, today, this week you have this concept, next week you scrap your previous concept, come up with a new concept, and suddenly you feel minded, yes or no, then you become lost. No, you have to train yourself to become firm. Don't overthinking. Okay, life is simple now. The most enemy of architects, even yourself now, is about EGO. Because ego is our enemy. So, some or other, you need to be humble, you need to be uh, listen to the advice. Don't be so egoistic about your whatever you want to do that you believe for. Because Albert Einstein said, the more knowledge, lesser the ego. But when you lesser the knowledge, the more the ego. I hope you understand this. <laughs> Arrogance is not confidence. I can see many students, uh, this generation, even my generation, so when you start to become overconfidence and you become arrogant. No, for me, there's, there's forget about all this uh, negativity. The other perspective that I want to share is about building information, modeling. Because I'm sure our generation, I think Prince and Emmanuel and all the lecturers, we are the same generation. We always learn from the manual. But your generation now is the evolution up to the technology's digitalization. But even though in building information modeling, this is your big enemy here. Why I show this animal? Anybody want to try? Why I show this? Because you start your design with this, this thing, mouse. You don't even holding your pen to begin your design concept. You begin with this, this gadget. Where is your talent, your artistic from your mind, your soul, up to your green, up to, to your pen, to your paper, compared to holding the, the mouse. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say here. Whatever it is, when you start to begin your concept, you need to sketch, my dear student, so that you can have a feel, you can have the trust, you can understand what you've been doing now by a lot of sketches to scrap your ideas rather than you just holding your mouse. Do some colors, do some you know, perspective, and then after you've got that, you can transfer it into the working drawings and then start to explore your gadget digitalization or maybe through AutoCADs, to Revit, and so on. Because all these tools is only a, a gadgets for you to enhance your, your drawings. It's not to begin with the concept. So I hope you understand this because the way, the reason I show this because students, when they have come up with a good sketch up, with good, I uh, you know, AutoCAD's drawing, Revit, uh, even Lumions, but when they want to convince their presentation, they forgot or maybe they don't know how to present because the soul is not connected. I hope you understand this. Can you imagine that such a beautiful perspective with the Lumions effect? But when the students start to present, they don't know how to begin, they don't know how to speak, they don't know how to convince. Why? Because the bloody Mickey Mouse. I hope you understand this. And then start to do models. Because models not only can see the form, but it's like talking to yourself, student. I have to confess myself until today, 
I'm doing a model to present my client. Because when you touch your models, it's like connecting your positive chi, the positive energy into that. And then you can feel the design when the client or even your lecturers hold your models, show your models, can understand the spaces that you want to create. Then a meaningful communication methodology is, is truly clear enough. No, you know, sometimes you can feel they are, you can smile in front of your models. So my encouragement you do models so that you can become a happy designer and healthy designer. I hope you can you can start to believe what I'm saying here. Having fun model doing models is like, you know, architecture, speak to yourself that, hey, such a wonderful caring. I hope you can understand this. So we start to do models, even the site models, so that you can integrate a lot of things, so that you can explain visually, visualize to your lecturers or even to your clients even. Yeah, one day, sooner or later, when you start to working in the industry, you can't run away to speak with people, my dear student. So that's why I encourage from now, you start to working as a team. I tell you, because architects is always a leaders in the group. We are not lone ranger. So seven C's to build a winning team by coaching your, with the right character, your communication, your commitment, your contagious energy, your caring and consistency. Make sure all the seven C's because we need to become a winning team. Trust each other, respect each other, understand each other, and don't forget to enjoy each other. I hope that you know, sooner or later, when you graduate from Dallas University, it will be the most beautiful memories with your friends. Maybe after 10 years, 20 years, when you, you know, tell the stories back about your past, I can tell you the worst uh, painful moment, it will be the most beautiful moments that you can share with you. This is why I quote what Steve Jobs said, do only way to do great works is to love what you do so make sure kiss your design when i say start to kiss your design it's not like keep it simple or not stupid and just make it sayang all right so love architecture so that you can indicate your patient to it because remember this you are the creator that spaces that you create into memories an idea is salvation by imagination. This is what Prenner Wright said. So image, you have to have a big imagination. Because when you have all this, what I explained halfway now, the strategy. So I would like to share you the strategy, how to improve your presentation, effective visual presentation, because communication is the most essential here. If you start to talk differently, people will understand differently. So make sure, don't make people confuse what you can try to explain. You give a message, it is yes or no. Don't become so fickle-minded. How to convince the, 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 the skill to the people is, is the most essential. Even though I can tell you, to declare to you, some of the uh, designers out there, they are, the design is not so great, but he got a job because the way he convinced to the clients, he got a job. Even the, compared to other designers, such a beautiful building, beautiful design, but he didn't get a job because he don't know how to convince the client. So make sure you have a clear uh, communication skills by listening, effective understanding, and make sure don't make people convinced about what you present. <laughs> Miscommunication is the most dangerous part. You know, become a different perception, you got lost, you got confused, or maybe you can get unsure, unclear. So disoriented, make sure you have a clear so that the medium, the message from the sender and receiver, you have to be very clear so that we don't want to have this type of stupidity. Imagine this architect, what happened if you don't hire, hire one? So the stupidity, the quality of state being stupid, I mean, I'm sorry to say this because sometimes people overthinking. You come up with a, you know, something like, whoops, shit happened. <laughs> you know what I mean? When you start to over design, when you start to uh, have a different perception or even miscommunication, 
uh, I mean, coming back to the society, you will make us people troublesome to use your space. I just make a simple images here that I collected, um, you know, to, to make you understand that don't make some, some uh, miscommunication the way how you, because I can tell you, your design, you need to communicate with your consultant, imagine that. We need to communicate with your engineers, the mechanical, electrical engineers, the contractors, the QS, landscape architect, many people, if you start to how, don't know how to talk, how to convince, this is what happened. I can tell you. So we don't want that. You want to be very clear your, how you want to explain, you want to send your information. So this is very simple. Do you understand what it means? Please be careful when you put revision clouds on your drawings. Some of the contractors do not understand. Because when you have some amendments, they make it a cloud in the drawings. And then the contractors straight away to do a cloud hole. Imagine that. <laughs> this is, I mean, sounds silly, but it happened. Students, when you do your illustration presentation, make sure your illustration make it very clear. Don't tell, you know, don't wait until your lecturer say, which planet are you staying now? We got two, two sun now. Or, or maybe you start to do your, you know, illustration with a, something like this. The car park is already parked in the, Kaposh, but the, the tire is still running. So, do, do, I mean, this is only example, my dear student. Yeah. So, a lot of things that you need to be identified. So, make sure you have a strategy how to make a list the points to communicate. You got an idea. So, as an encoding, but decoding part, you make sure that message been received clear enough. Okay. I hope you understand. So, don't forget that when, when you have a presentation, we need to hear the feedback so that you can make a post-mortem about your presentation. So make sure the process is very clear, my dear student. So I hope that uh, the, the recording of this, my presentation will be reviewed again and again so that you can improve from time to time. Always remember, language of design compare language of the drawings. You know, by language, we have letters, words, grammar, sentences, paragraph, a lot more. But how to translate all these elements of language into our drawings by those elements, principles, part of drawings. Make sure your drawings has complete, your meaningful message has been there. So types of drawings, it can be various sketches of ideas, how to illustrate your concept, your drawings, uh, I mean, your layout, your elevation, your section, your perspective. Make sure, come with the models. I mean, this is my advice, my recommendation to all of you. So today, start to list down 10 of the points that I want to share with you. So all these 10 points is accommodated to how to make effective uh, presentation. So I hope you can jot down one by one, but you can review this recording. So whatever it is, I can do ask me during Q&A session. Okay, number one, this is what a strategy. Don't miss your design brief. If you don't understand your design brief, do ask your lecturers. Even myself, facing a client, they have a design brief. If you do, I don't understand, I just go and ask clearly what they want, actually. So make sure the information is prompt, yeah? And then make sure you know the information so that you can implement it into your design and achieve your objective. Design brief can spell out your need statements, your schedule accommodation, all the basics needs that you have to identify. So that's my advice to all of you. The need statements, your design briefs is very important, number one, so that you can create your program. You can enhance your from design brief. So make sure you have a design risk very clear so that you can make a checklist. So do that. If none, none of you haven't done this, okay, start to do this. Do the checklist. When you do a checklist, you can become a various way. You become colorful checklist by infographic, you know what I mean? And then you can make a design templates from steps to another steps when you have all these clear checklists and need statement. And then your schedule accommodation by table so that you can make a list that you comply all the spaces you need to design. And start to do to comparison about your site planning and your understanding and the learning outcomes is very, very clear and you're able to do this. So that 
once you know, understand your niche statement, your briefs, project, and everything, then you can to, to use your tools by sketching, by your gadgets, so that you can achieve your vision, your objective into your design. Secondly, it's about site force. You know why I need to present this? Because some of the students I observe, they when they start to explain about the site analysis, they start to become confused and then start to extract a, a unnecessary idea of concept. Because mostly a lot of things been constrained and you need to figure out the features. And then you need to bring the characteristics of your design from the site. So this is your decision making. SWOT analysis, I'm sure all of you know this, but what the fundamental about SWOT analysis? Are you thinking about just grab the points and then putting the, the elements by strength, weakness, opportunity, or threats? But for me, you need to really understand what means by SWOT analysis. If you, I mean, during lockdown, people, you know, everybody studying from home, but we have a technology to do some virtual or maybe some drone. But if you can have an opportunity to do SWOT analysis, it's not just about to put the draw, but you need to understand so that you can explain to your lecturers or even to your client from the site force why the reason, the designs, you know, any, any consequences that you need to imply into your, so that people can understand your design from the site. I hope you understand this because the site, for me, I believe that from the site, mostly of my project, I begin with my site analysis. And then we, it's like the site talking with me, giving a, an idea to make an, a soul of the design. And then from there, you can start to do some messing and then start to play around from the site uh, information, site synthesis, and then try to do some mood boards so that how to implement your idea and do some models so that you can capture of the site contour. For example, this one of our project, that I identify the surrounding area. The project is in the middle of the city in KL. And then we do a lot of things, not only about SWOT analysis, not only about site analysis, but even the traffic impact assessments. Can you imagine that? This is very common, where is sunrise, sunset, the wind prevailing is very common. The view, for example, the, is it the site is truly potential? This site is truly potential, can see the corner, uh, for, uh, for uh, the whole panoramic of Kuala Lumpur is a potential. And then we can see some ideas from the site. You know, you do that. You know, this is one of the project in University of Malaya that I would like to share you later that I need to identify the surrounding area where is the best point of the, you know, to, to enhance the modeling, to enhance the concept. The I mean, this is my, my best reference so far in my life, responsive environment I just share with you. If you can have this book, then from there, you can accommodate into your drawings through your tools. And then I love to do sketches and then start to do your modeling. Then truly enhances whatever you design is truly communicate from the side. I hope you can understand this. So they can make it more effective a presentation so that you can relate your storyline from the side, actually, why you design such thing, why design such angle, what the concept, what, how the form looks like, is from the side force. And then the model itself can be enhanced it, and then you can start to play some materials, how it looks like of the building. You know, you have, you know, during my time, I have this type of camera, but now you can just even use your, your smartphone in the pocket, from the pockets, you know, I mean, do that. The third one is about typology information. Yeah, when you have a, a topology, the design approach, make sure your your make it make it more effective presentation by telling the people about your design approach. What is your concept? What is your design theories? You need to study this. You, just using a keywords, just good enough. No need to do some a lot of write-ups, but just a tagline, and then you can explain your design concept. Mostly people uh, make it a design based on the issue that facing of the certain project you know through the issues for example we're talking about circulation okay how people want want to prove the space by architecture concept and then the student can explain their their typology about spaces and circulation and start to enhance it and then truly understand by putting some a lot of images some infographic like this and with the bible diagrams i hope you can you know 
Don't forget, especially for the final year students, these are our fundamentals because once you graduate, you will come back to this stage again in the building industry so that the client will understand what kind of zoning that you want to do by bubble diagram. You know, public zoning, private zoning, so you indicate your bubble diagram. Because the spaces, it definitely need to divide into your, your space. Is it public zoning, semi-public zoning, or semi-private zoning, or even private zoning? So make it a symbol in your plan. Symbols. They are very simple. Use your creativity to explain people. You don't need to spell out. People just look at it and understand that. You know what I mean. Don't forget how to put the legend, what kind of the space. Some of the students forgot to do this. Now, this is one kind of the effective, even sometimes you don't need to stand in front of your drawings. The drawings will speak up by themselves. Imagine that. Play a few colors so that you have a tone, so that it will be so impressed to have the clear, effective communication from your drawings, not from yourself. The reason I show this is because when you create these design spaces, why not you just indicate some finisher layout so that you can make your space more meaningful? You know, for example, you need some furniture layout, not just empty spaces from your plan. Just give a try to do your furniture layout so that it's more meaningful of the space. For example, you can extract from your SketchUp, then we become more meaningful rather than just empty spaces. So this is how we call it effective communication through our presentation. And the reason I show this compass because some of the students forgot to put their compass. Sorry, don't forget that this is fundamentals. Even the big, the small thing like this, you can input. I don't think you can impose all the big things. You need to put the campus here. Anthropometric, if possible, when you do your sections, if possible, to show your figures, your dimensions. I mean, this is the most effective presentation if you want to spell out the anthropometric, you know? And then try to indicate some sustainable or affordability or even identity or even liability. This is about sale. I mean, some ideas yeah relate to like for example sdg sustainable development goals so that you make it more intellectual and the projects more uh i can tell you is more uh matured presentation about detailing you can browse a lot of detailing we don't ask you to do detailing but at least you know where to find your reference how to do this is good enough because in the building industry all this detailing you need to sit down with your structural engineers but at least the fundamentals that you can showcase here so that your presentation more visualized more understanding how the joint how detailing looks like doesn't mean to be perfect but at least the fundamentals is there be brave to do this very easy to find this detailing so that it become a case study for you yeah, especially for your firefighting uh, requirements. Uh, I think I encourage all the students start to do uh, firefighting where is the escape staircase and so on. You know, you do that. I mean, when you do this, at least one corner of your drawings, your drawings, your presentation, not only effective, people will say your drawings, presentation, it become more mature. I hope you can understand this. Everywhere I went, if you can check it out my Facebook, I always snap a uh, evacuation map and to share to all i got one album got many pictures that when i went anywhere to the space i always take uh, photos of the evacuation map so that you can share and don't forget you have a moral responsibility my dear student to indication of universal design i hope that you can have your duty of care so that when you whatever you design think about disabled people think about the elderly people so that you design more meaningful my dear student you know what i mean this is one of example how to make a circulation uh, division. And then I don't mind if I can see the student can make a narration on your, your drawings actually. So they can have a, a few functions to a lot of sketches. Uh, you know, the sketches make meaningful. Even myself, what every project, I still keep on my first sketch. So do some sketches so that it becomes more meaningful design that your initial idea begin with the sketch actually keep it your sketchbook buy another sketchbook and do sketch a lot of sketch and show to your lecturers that you done this not you know not only just from the air but from the sketches even smart way how to indicate your 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 spaces into your plan by doing this
I hope you can ask your lecturer, what is this mean? The design layout furniture. And you can, you know, overlap your drawings by butter papers. You know, you can do some extract for the modeling, sections, do that. <laughs> when you do section, it's more meaningful of your design. People will clearly effective enough to understand your section. Even your how to do indicate your presentation mode also is very, very important. You see how people to do elevation, shadow casting, baseline. My dear student, how to relate with the site surrounding. It's not just only float by themselves. I hope you understand this. How to relate elevation with the site surrounding. You see the example? Sometimes you don't need to do more. You just make it a backdrop so that it can look more related to the site. <laughs> yeah, baseline sections, baseline. Where is boundary line? Where is a uh, uh, setback lines? Do that, my dear student. Even you can see the elevation more presentable when you do some colors your your sections. You see, what's the the the, the weightage when you do an empty section with the a depth color of the section? You see how to do section relate to the side. Do that. I hope you can understand this. <laughs> you know, do section to relate to the side. All right. And then I love to see students to do can do night version. Wow, you know, how to compare during the timing, morning, evening, noon. So next one is about research. I'm sure you have to do some research, case studies. Yeah. When you do the six case studies, don't just pick up a case study and you just explain, oh, I love this case because the form, because of the idea. Not only that, but you need to be, become deeper and deeper why the case study become uh, related to your design concept. And I love to see you can approach a opening of the mood board, some interiors, some finishes, some patterns, you know, so the, the fabrics, how it looks like, you know, just go beyond this, my dear student. So that it become more effective, more meaningful presentation. You can go abroad, doing some sticky back, uh, sticky paper, and then so they can discuss um, with your yourself. And then don't forget, do some discussion with your friends even. How to derive your concept? You do some research, asking them what is your concept, what is your case study. For me, I always that believe that when you do discussion, you will make it more higher understanding of your to improve your design. Make it very clear discussion. It's not about oh you copy my concept, you you follow my idea. No, it's the idea is subjective, my dear student. For me, I encourage all of you when you want to you know begin with the design concept do some discussion with your group it's more effective i can tell you this because in the real practice we do a lot of discussion that is the truth i hope you can take note of that by observation yeah because architect is a not only a problem solver but we also as a problem finder because we can extract the issues and then we think, we plan, is it yes or no, or good or bad? You know what I mean? Then you come up with a solution. From the solution, then you could put the, your narrative or your design. Because the great process, it will be a great ending of your project. The way you extraction of your design concept by narrative or your images of your photographies, some, you know, some meaningful to relate with the, the nature, to relate with the senses, for example narrative it because it's an abstraction of your design because design begins with an arts the feelings and design nobody will say wrong or right here because design is subjective the thing to say right or wrong is only technical part and then can you imagine you can narrative to your design idea concept this is one of the example that i love to see that when the student can do just hierarchy to the spaces and work very smart you see, can caption some angles so that you can explain abstraction, can explain design ideas behind this. And then I encourage all the students to come up with the element of USP so that your design becomes unforgettable. Unique selling proposition into your design so that it becomes more unforgettable presentation that you have done this in your life, in the episode of your student life. Do some, um, bring your character into your design. 
complexity, there's one angle here. Because some of the students believe on form follow function or function follow form. But don't get confused, it's subjective. But function follow forms or form follow functions, for me, is, is, is still the same. But as long as you understand the form or the function to be unity, it should be no problem. Yeah, Form follow deadline, actually. <laughs> because the way I put here, when the students start to overthinking, they forgot the deadline. And then when come to the deadline, submission day, uh, you're lacking of a few requirements. So don't, don't, don't follow your emotions. So you have to make sure form, follow, fun. Enjoy the flow. Make sure you follow what you believe into your program. Form, follow, function that has been misunderstood. This is what Frank Wright said. Yeah, form and function should be one. This is what I believe and then join a spiritual union. So architecture, I can tell you, when talking about a form or function, you have to base on your category of your building. Because I don't want to go deeper now, because some of the project like a, a, a project for people, but you make a people confused to your design. So you make sure you identify the category of your building. You, know, you make sure. And then all the, the, the famous architect, they have a symbol, they have a signature, make sure you take it as the, your, your guidance actually. So don't forget when you do your project, make sure it's uh, suitable to the category of the building, even though you want to make it more iconic, but somehow or other it's unlogical to do category of building a certain type of design. Everybody start looking pin interest, you know, start to talking about visual arts and can speak by themselves, but design is where science and art will break even. This is the fundamental of architecture because architecture is about arts, and science. I hope you can absorb it because whatever you good things we build, end up to build yourself now. Making models, I think the one that I always encourage to the students, do model students. Because I know model will take time. Yeah, a lot of, of course to do it. But for me, you can use a recycle materials to do models and then you can have fun. Can you imagine that when you do models, you can understand, you can hold models, you can identify what kind of space you want to do, how the space, space looks like, how the shadow casting looks like. Do study models, do mock-up models, do models, uh, the progress models, so that you can showcase to your lecturers during your final project, the series of the models. This is the process that I've done this, sir. You tell your lecturers, madam, from day one, when I start to do study models, concept models, and I start to do some artistic abstraction or an art, and I explore it, and I know it's a mistake, I know it's a failure, then I learn more how to solve this. To so explain to your lecturers, when you do models, when you do sectional models even, you showcase the space, you can play around with the lights, you can play around with the form, you learn from one step to another step, it will not be perfect, but you learn from one episode to your episode. Sectional model, you can show a lot of things, you explain by the process of the models, then I can tell you, even not only lecturers, a client will understand the meaningful of your design by showing models. This is physical models. Even the detailing models, you can explain it well. But some of the models can be big scale or small scale, but make sure you're affordable or maybe you can capable to do this model. It will take time, but it will be fun and unforgettable memories because until today, I still keep my first year models uh, in my house so that I remembering it, it will be sweetest memories study model, mock-up models so that you can, people can, and then from the model, you can start to abstract it to do some, your digital models. My dear student, yeah, models is uh, important, I tell you. Because for me, when I saw the student don't have models, they only have digital models, SketchUp, Lumion. Wow, it's only from the screen. If you can make models physically, people can feel it. People can feel your sweat. <laughs> people can feel your soul. Uh, this is one of the models that I, I done one of the project uh, to, to showcase in Venice, Benale. Uh, we make a huge model, but we forgot that we need to put in container. It's so fragile. So we end up making a small model and put some lighting effects into it. But when you showcase a model with our design concept that projects had to be done to showcase to the world, and people will explain it. So for a big model, they have to send to Venice, but I make it very small. It's a costly. And people start to wonder, and people start to discover the things. I mean, you know, different languages, Japanese talking English, you know what I mean? 
even though they can understand this by you explaining the models. Uh, this one of my experience that the site is very sloping that you have no chance to, to, to showcase, to, uh, to make your client understand the site is sloping. That's why the design concept come up with this because the models will make a lot of information about your design. I hope you understand this. This is the effect, effective way when you want to do presentation, when you do models, effect to the site force so that it can relate to your concept, to relate your, and then, you know, you can begin with this, the sketch. This is my, my earlier sketch, one of the project. And then, you know, can impose in the, from the side section, you do section, you innovate the section, and then, you know, how to implement how the segregation of the space, and then start to do the 3D modeling. Experimental, yeah, you do some experimental modeling. Then, when you start to explain the modeling, you try to make it as some shadow casting into it with uh, you know, some lighting effects. Then models, of course, so that you can have a satisfaction into it. And then when you've done a model, uh, people will, will truly can discover from, from their eyes. And then I don't need to stand there to explain. And people start to wondering what kind of space. And then you will try to make, make it some adoption from the collage you know, from the real site situation, from the site photos. So the existing route, and then you compose to your design. And then this is one of my favorites perspective that can impose to the site. So can you imagine all the storyline that I told you just now? On the day itself, don't you feel positive energy to present, you know, to your final project with a series of models? And then you can you imagine a series of models and a lot of drawing. And in the way how you dress, you know, you feel proud of yourself that you want to present your things. Then come up with a presentation methodology. Remember this today. I believe on three I concept when you want to do presentation. Number one I, make sure your presentation is informative. Two, make sure your presentation is illustrated. Number three, make sure your presentation is impressive. Three I, very simple. This is the one that I, I, you know, we participate in this competition. You're one of the finalists. When you post it on the on the on the presentation wall, it become three I, informative, illustrative, and impressive. So when I showcase all my presentation, because they require the competition required only four bots. So you have to make sure where is your information they're going to put. No need to put a lot of write-up, just the bullet points. Where you want to illustrate your sketches, your, your drawings, your killer drawings. It's not your killing drawings. And then you indicate why where you put your floor plans, your section, your elevation, and make sure your information to make it very uh, precise and concise. So and up, we won that competition and appeared in the front uh, cover of AM magazine. I think it's about 10 years ago. And then don't you feel that your, your presentation, your, your design has been captured in the front cover of the magazine with other magazine in the bookshop? You know, you feel that for me, I share with you is a, is a element of satisfaction. It's not to say be proud enough, but the satisfaction that you showcase your design until you have your own fan. You know what I mean? So do models, when you do models, it's easy to do your illustration on your presentation, your section, you identify the, the, the section information. You make sure your presentation, it become impressive. And then do some presentation with the most impressive dear student. You need to discover how to do your boss presentation. Is it landscape or portrait? And then make sure you do an idea. Some of the students didn't have an idea how to do your presentation board. So for me, I showcase a lot of samples there. How to do a proper presentation with a good storyline here. You can browse through Pinterest or maybe some images in Google. How to do a, a composition of your presentation and make sure the three I concept has been implemented. The informative, make sure your presentation is informative enough to explain by themselves. Illustration, you do a lot of illustration so that illustration can given talk, the drawing given can talk themselves. Then make sure you become impressive presentation student. So that's why I encourage you make it very simple, but don't make it so complicated. 
Some other president is so complicated. Then some other president is so simple. So simple is so not enough. Uh, by by sketches. So choose your way, the way you want to do, but make sure it can be presented well. And then you know what to present and make sure the, the, the board can present themselves, my dear student. Do some innovation ideas, some, some like that. So this is one of the things that I want to share. It's a very simple information that I want the competition just now I showed you just now. So what is the GPI design criteria? I put in some images, put my own sketch, some infographic, and then just a bullet points information, just a bullet points. And then can you imagine in front of you slides now? It's easy to understand. Informative, illustrative, and very impressive, simple. You know, some of the approach can be totally manual. You see, these are all manual, but the beautiful part is about the infographic. Sometimes somehow you just can sketch. People love to see architect sketch nowadays. You know, when you do some sketches, uh, some of this one of the place making that we conducted in the New Steam Laya. And then one of the project that, you know, when you start to identify your modeling, and then you easily can explain. This one of my experience uh, won this competition, uh, Faculty Business and Account in Putra, uh, in University of Malaya. And then we explained to the client that the building is 360 views, different angles with the feng shui elements. And then the, the interior space looks like, and then the, it's been constructed. And then it's already obtained CCC. And then back year 2017, we won a gold award for this. And then the client was so happy to see that the first words came out from his mouth. He said that this is not an architecture only. This in as an art. I was so shocked and surprised that it came out from his mouth. Because the way we make a very effective presentation to your client, and then you say that you caption your imagination by saying that your building will be iconic and then it looked like a lantern at night when you putting some lighting, the piece of art, he said. Well, thankful on that. So to share with you, student, I know I also take my time now, but the most important to do the effective presentation is to make a storyline here. Before you, maybe the while you're finishing your project because of a deadline, you, your mind have to thinking about your storyboards, your storyline, so that you can make a proper presentation uh, uh, element that you want to share, maybe by sketch or what, so that you know what the storylines you want to share to your lecturers or, you know, when you do your presentation. For me, a storyline is very, very important because myself, any presentation, I have my storyline. And then you know what to say, just a bullet point, so that when you do in front of your lecturers, you know what to present based on your storyline. So such a big section start, uh, present in models for models, and then you know you keep it your storyline from one at one segment to another segment so that you know what to present. The next one is manifesto. Always set your mind. It's about winning. Of course, don't you don't start to be skeptical. They say, "Oh my god, my my design is no good." No, whatever it is, you do your best now. Make sure you your teams do your best now. Working as a team, do your best now. What is the learning outcome? You make sure comply all the learning outcomes. Make sure you're more colorful, more positively, so that you can have some taxonomy blooms there, how you want to work as a group, you know, so that you can create, you can evaluate yourself, you can analyze, you can apply it, so that you can understand and to be remembered. Create your own signature, my dear student. You have to identify your signature now. What is your story? So that you can tell your story in the future to your friends, to your junior, that you are, we have done. So make your story been heard, my dear students. I hope you know what I mean. So when you've done this, your storyline, uh, I'm sure that you've been encouraged to do your portfolio. But nowadays, I can see a lot of student potential to do the very good portfolio, uh, very creative portfolio. Make sure very clear portfolio. You know, I think this one can be guided by your lecturers. I'm sure Taylor University's portfolio students. Uh, Good, very good, very impressive. I saw it. And the last word is now, it's about the last segment is about the goal and the objective, my dear student. Set your mind there. Whatever you want to do presentation, you know yourself now. You know your weakness, but don't showcase your weakness. Hide it. You showcase your expertise to achieve your successful goal. 
one step to another step, one step to another step so that you can achieve success. So that whatever you do, you have your aim now. I'm sure your presentation, you know yourself, you know your weakness, but make sure you set your dream that you can be explained well so that, you know, whatever you want to do, the most important thing is that make sure if you feel your failure, but you stand up to be, stop worrying about it, moving forward because failure is not opposite of success. It's a part of success actually. Okay. But for me, I always believe on helping people. Yeah. Sometimes when you see your, your friends having a problem, you know, you can just volunteer yourself, um, you know, can share some ideas and so on, helping them because it can be cure. Believe it or not, when you start your, your concept or whatever do you, what you do, when your friend, you want to help your friend, some or rather, the magical part, the moment you help your friend, you can describe your own idea already. I don't know, I'm not sure I'll, all of you have this experience, but for me, it happened to me many, many times. You will build your soul and happiness of self. Because why? The magical moment is about not only to wake up early morning with the determination, but make sure you go back with the satisfaction. This is a magical moment. All the architect in this life is uh, talking about satisfaction. Well, student, it's your choice. Don't forget two things to define yourself. When you have everything, yeah, it's about your attitude. But when you have nothing, it's about your patience. That's your choice. It's your life because we are dream makers. That's now I said to you just now. Be a dream maker, but not a dream breaker. Okay? But we are dream chaser. So don't chase the money. Yeah, you chase your dream now. So never give up on your dreams, my dear students, because success is a ladder that you cannot climb with your hands in your pocket. You have to move on as a team. I know that this is a one abstract drawings, painting, that the steps to one of the destination, but actually there's another step towards, because for me, this will be another episode, another episode, another episode that you want to create your storyline to be success. Through the presentation, effective presentation, meaningful presentation, so that you can be remembered because you remember this, design your life the way you want it to be. Because you, you, all of you, you are the creator of your own destiny. Success is a journey, not destination. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay cool, everyone. Pray for everyone's safety, keep safe. You are the architects of tomorrow. Wish you all the best, students. Thank you so much. Okay, thank, thank you so much, Architect Adrianta, for the very inspiring, very energetic, and a very detailed presentation. I'm sure the, the student will be uh, inspired okay, with, with your talk today. Okay, I think uh, five key points that I took out from the presentation today. One will be uh, be true to yourself. Okay, I think uh, students should understand their strengths and weaknesses. Uh, the second one is teamwork, okay, the importance of collaboration. The third one is time management. We, as we always have issues on that, I mean, both students and also likewise professional, we try to master time management. Okay, then the fourth one, valuable tips and strategies on project management, um, commun visual communication and others. Okay, and I think the, the last one, uh, you, you, you cite a lot of techniques. Uh, then the last one will be critical, the 10, 10 tips. Okay, I think it's quite timely because they're going to the final phase of their design. Okay, so I'm sure they they will ask uh, they will question themselves now on uh, do I have all those ten things that uh, our uh, distinguished guest speaker mentioned to the architect Adrianta. Okay, so uh, I think probably I'll start off one question uh, if you're okay before I pass it to the the, the students and my colleagues. Sure, yeah. sure. Uh, during during my time, I think uh, I I'm not sure whether. Uh, because the generation now is quite digital, as you have mentioned, uh, something to do with identity. Uh, I think uh, before it's, it's always easier to have our own identity, even when, when we draw that line, we put the colors, when we do the perspective, right? Okay, uh, for, for the taste generation, is identity still, because we, 
is still is still uh, can we still look into it? Okay, uh, because mostly are non digitally. Yeah, I think probably uh, identity in terms of design, but identity in terms of visual presentation. Yeah, I mean, okay, to be to be the truth, okay, yeah, to 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 make to make yourself to that people will find out for who you are, what kind of style of architects you are, it's not from yourself to justify this. It's from people observation. You cannot say that, oh, uh, Prince, you know that this is my identity. You, know, you cannot say that, you cannot declare yourself that this is my stroke, this is my design style, this is my, my identity, or this is my Prince, this is my identity. No, you cannot say that. To identify your identity, to, to identify your signature is from people to observe this. So I, I for me, when I start to observe uh, the students where they have, they, have, they have their own style, their own approach, their own design style, even they can see the different type of strokes design, even they can see the different type of approach of the design, then we can identify that, right, you have your, your, you have your own approach now. You try to build up your own identity, your approach now. It's very important for you to, 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 and to explain to your students that they know that, oh, my lecturer noted this and they encourage them. But it's not because they, they need to go and find your identity. It's come automatically, it becomes spontaneously that you observe. I think, I believe all of you know, your students, they, 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 the style approach, they, you know, you encourage them. Because architects, sooner or later, it's not because of you need to become so egoistic and proud to show to the people that this is my design. <laughs> Everybody has to follow this my design. No. For me, I'm sorry if other architects to be, to be soft-hearted to listen to me. For me, I'm looking for when you start to create whatever design, whatever space you create, architecture is about, no, it's not about us, identity. Architecture is about when you serve people when you help society then the society or even people will identify oh this is your identity that's it so humble but not timid but mm -hmm. so proud but no ego mm -hmm. i hope you understand that the identity that you need looking for i mean that's my opinion please i'm not sure about others that's my opinion i i, I totally agree <laughs> thanks architect Adrian. probably i'll pass my the the the, the uh time to my colleagues if they have yep. any question or our dear students. Jesse, Please. do you have any question? Is Jesse here? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Hi, Jesse. Probably can. I'm sure the first question very, but it will take time, but after that we'll non-stop. <laughs> I think before, before we go to Jesse Architect Adrian, we'll pass it to your good friend. Okay, uh, I think you won't be here if uh, not for his invitation, Architect Emmanuel. Okay. Yeah. Manny, any, 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 any word? Okay. I'm, I'm speechless. <laughs> <laughs> Manny is speechless. <laughs> I'm inspired. Thank you very much for being here today. My pleasure to serve Tyler University. My pleasure. I wish yes, that I can make it uh, a physical because I, I hope that we can conduct a workshop for the student how mm -hmm. to improve their communication skill. A, sh a very short workshop that, you know, can improve that. But I'm sure we have another alternative soon. Yeah. Hopefully you can come down again to tell us. Next Sam. Oh, hopefully next semester, Architect. Yeah, yeah, if yeah, you're, if you're, you're right. I know you're quite busy with them and other with your work. Uh, also, but hopefully we can have you for next semester space right. to face uh, lecture and workshop. Jesse, did you make? Did you manage? To Come formulate your question. <laughs> Come, Jesse. Don't be so shy. Yeah. <laughs> the moment I don't have any questions, but okay. I find that talk very inspiring. All right. And hopefully. I learned a lot from it. <laughs> Thank you. Unfortunately, it's through online, but if in physical, uh, hopefully it will be more useful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesse. I Thanks, think Jesse. I, I, I'm <laughs> sure that the, the first thing is uh, maybe students shy to ask, but I, I, I've been this 
I've been taught this topic many, many university, and I know mm. the question been asked is about how to to make yourself not to be um, panic or not not to be freak or you know shy when you want to do presentation. How to make this thing well? I think the best part is when you start to do your uh, mock up. You want to do, you have to do your rehearsal before you want to do your presentation. Just a short rehearsal in front of the mirror, maybe in front of your friends, you know, a close friend, hopefully, because friend will laugh at you. Say, ah, Jesse, you present like, <laughs> like uh, K-pop, you know, um, you know, people start to teasing you, but it's okay because you want to improve your, your confidence level. You know what I mean? Because to tell the truth, I, if, I want to share with you, if you can come up with this type of uh, behavior, for example, Prince, yeah, for example, I hope students can observe the, if you mm. got a chance to go any uh, any place. When you, for example, Jesse, can you imagine that you yamcha with your friends and mama, and suddenly this guy or this girl come to you and say, excuse me, uh, I'm sorry to bothering you. I just want to need you two minutes. I, I'm selling pen now. Uh, you know, the pen can be, so don't avoid him or her. Learn from this guy, learn from her. Because can you imagine that these people, they, 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 they have to sell the pen, for example. They don't, they don't have to feel shy, but they need to portray and confident to convince the people. But some of the people, you say, ah, no, 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 I don't want to get, you know, please go away. I, don't, don't, don't catch on me, don't avoid me. Actually, you learn from them. You sit down with them and you talk to them. You see how approaching them to you. This is what we call, I encourage all the students, go and find and enhance not only about presentation, but the art of convincing. Jesse, with your friends now. Can you imagine, I, I can, can bet you, if you can sit down alone, eating alone in a restaurant, if you can start to chat with the other table and end up exchanging your business card, bingo, you are there already. There will be a, a, the a most convincing part that you have done that a stranger, you can chit chat and then you can start to asking or he or she asks you, what do you do and then end up Ending is changing your business card, and they know that, oh, you are an architect. Uh, and then suddenly, who knows your luck? Say, I'm a developer. Bingo. You see, Jesse? So make yourself face like, like I don't say to, to make it as like a wall, very strong, but you need to portray yourself the confidence because architect bring image. We have a style, we have your attractive moment, do that. I hope all the students here, I don't know how to guide you because through online, but this is tips. Yeah, talk to people, asking people, asking, asking your lecturers, don't run away from your lecturers. Don't be you know, scared, oh, I make mistake. I don't want to see Mr. Money. He's so, he's so, so strict for me. Oh, I want to cry. <laughs> oh, Money, Mr. Manuel. No, you go and start to convince Mr. Manuel, excuse me. Uh, can I have a time to, 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 to ask a few questions? I'm sure your lecturer will help you. For sure. Okay, Jesse, on behalf of your friends, because I know they're shy to ask me. Okay. Actually, there's one question. There's one question. Oh, where, yeah. where, where? So, Brian was asking, uh -huh. how do you proceed if you hate your own design? Okay, okay. <laughs> this is a this is good question from Ryan. Ryan, in this life, you have yin and yang, if you believe on feng shui. Black, white, yin and yang, positive, negative. Okay, number one, when you, when you ask me, how do you proceed if you hate your own design? Okay, whatever it is, you need to embrace yourself with the positive chi. Because life has to be balanced. You have negative, you have positive, you have love, you have hate. Whatever happened, you need to proceed, life goes on with, number one, your sincerity. If you're sincere to yourself, whatever you do, accept it or not, good or bad, or you know, you hate or love it, if you're sincere enough, you'll be acceptance and then you do your best, move on, you know, you just go ahead, still do your best, even though you hate your design. Because why? 
you are sincere to yourself. This is the best I could do. Forgive yourself that, you know, this is the best I could do, even though I do, I hate to look to, to my design, but, you know, I sincere, I do my best. From hate, I still love you, my design. I mean, I just do my best to present. Why? Whatever you do, make sure the value of satisfaction, the value of outcome is still there, even though it's not 100%, because nobody can achieve 100%. Even though you can achieve for up to 70% or even 60% or even 50%, you just can accept this and then just be proud of yourself. That's my answer to you, Ryan. Just be proud of yourself because you have a value. Even though you hate your design, even your lecturer condemning your design, you just smile in front of the lecturers. Thank you so much, Mr. Prince. Thank you so much, Mr. Manny. You hate my design, but you, I, I still love my works. It's not about my, I hate my design, but I love my work. And you talk to yourself that, yes, Ryan, I'm sincere to myself. This is the best I could do. I'm still proud of myself because even though the design has been hit, but I'm still proud of my work. Always remember, Ryan, pain is temporary, but the pride is forever. Okay, Ryan. Well said. Thank you. Okay. I, I have a question. Yeah, Mr. Right. Yeah, Mr. Mr. has a question. Hi. Um, before the question, I would like to continue uh, what Adrianta's advice is to students uh, and the question on how to um, embrace their design and present it with passion and love while they hate it. I don't think the word is hate. This design, I told my group, it's like your child, it's your baby. You know, yeah. you conceive it, you have pato pato, and then you know you correct. You, and then you conceive this baby, and then you know you are going to embrace this baby and introduce this baby to your assessor. So sometimes it may hit a roadblock, and you realize you think that you hate it. Actually, you don't like. Uh, parents never hate their children. Yeah. No matter how bad their children are. You still think you give them excuses. You create excuses for your children so you continue loving them. You would never abandon them. You never hate them. So that's my advice to uh, Wonderful. Students. They are like your children, yeah? Wonderful. Embrace them always. Yeah, like, and like you say, you have made it very clear. Embrace them with passion, yes. with sincerity. And the law of attraction will apply. Once you embrace your work with love and sincerity, your assessor will see it with love and sincerity. Yeah, nothing is so bad. Anyway, uh, my question to you, Adrianta, is that students always have very limited time to present their work. Yeah. Like 20 minutes to present your entire yeah, thing. Yeah. I mean, in real life, we got more time than that. Um, so in an academic world, somehow they are tested in that sense. So yeah. what is your advice to them to present their work within such short period of time? Right. Thank you, Ms. Tay. I think there's a very good question. Uh, in reality, I, I just want to just a quick sharing session here. I participated in this competition just now, University of Malaya. Uh, there's a five finalist architects and, and the last one. So the first architect, actually the presentation, every each of architect accommodate about 45 minutes only. But I'm sure the first architect took about one and a half hours. Second took about one hour. Third one, and then suddenly come, came to me, the organizer told me that, uh, Mr. Adrenta, you only have 15 minutes because Tansri had to go off. Can you imagine that? Eh? I'm the last presenter for 15 minutes. I cannot start to complain to the organizer. It cannot, it's not fair. How come the first architect can present one hour? Oh, you said in the in the letters, the brief said 45 minutes. How come you give me 50 minutes? You cannot start to complain. Because I still smile, positive energy, move forward. Okay. So I always have a contingency plan. So my presentation mode always have a one hour uh, presentation, maybe 15 minutes. And then uh, last one is the 10 minutes. I always prepare that. Any plan A, plan B, plan C. So when I went to the presentation for 50 minutes, I straight away talking about the silent points and convince the client by showing the, the pictures from his inside and we got my strategy. And then thanks God, we won that competition. And then we've been given a chance to build the uh, this design on the site and then obtain CCC. 
And then the team won a gold PEM award uh, previous years back. And then when I told this story to, to, to many people, now I have a platform to tell the students. When, we, when you have given about limited of times, you always have a plan. You should have a plan. Plan A, plan B, plan C. Let's say you've been given like 10 minutes and you got a lot of things to, to, to explain. You have to highlight a salient points only. You don't need to explain in detail. Because that detail, you can leave it to the Q&A session. For example, that's why I said the three I very important. The informative, you straight away talking about very precise and concise bullet points, bullet points that you want to explain. No need to explain about the site too enough because the site analysis has been presented by the groups. You just straight away present that my concept relate to the site because of this, 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 this within one, two minutes. And then bullet points uh, about the infographic, the informative that you want to share the illustration, straight away to show your section, your planning, your site plan, everything, and then your concept through your illustration based on your killer perspective and your models and everything in about what, 15 minutes, just giving a bullet points. And the best part is when you present the things, always remember to convince your lecturers by showing the beautiful part of your progress. That's why I can tell you, when you start to present precise and concise, straight away to the point, and then leave it other matters to your Q&A session. The lecturer might ask you again, and then you can explain more. It's a strategy. Uh, this is what I can consider, because a lot of presentation are only given about 10 minutes, and then student up to eight minutes go to the hierarchy of the content, not enough for two minutes. So pity. So that's why there's no self the best for last. You need to showcase the best first thing. Okay, that's my, my tips on the mistake. Man, I love your analogy just now when you said about the, the when you 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 know you hate your design, but actually it's not you hate your design, you need to embrace yourself, smile, positive chi into your works. Yeah. That's very important. It's like sometimes you know, we I don't know if you have children, like I yeah. have a child. Sometimes you are frustrated with Correct. your own children, you know, like I gave birth to this thing. Yes, yes. You know, then when you get over it, it's like, oh, no, no, I, I think then you will come up with excuses and just make it work. Yeah. True, true. Yeah. I mean, the analogy to give to the student for baby, I don't think the student can feel that because there's, <laughs> there's students, people like us, we have kids, maybe we can understand. But for the students, um, whatever it is, it's not about... Okay, hear this, this. I'm sharing my, my quotes here that I believe. Whatever I do in my life, even I participate any competition or even I um, implement any projects or maybe even any talks or any things in my life, winning or losing is not a matter here. To tell yes. the truth. It's not mm -hmm. a matter. Win, even for a student, you want to score A or even you scared to be failed. Of course, everybody wants to pass and everybody wants to score a good marks. Of course, there's a vision there. But try to put this aside. It's not a matter here. But the matter is just enjoy it with enjoyment works, sincerity, and make sure you satisfy your work. The satisfaction value that every architect in this life looking this magical moment. That's good enough. You know yeah. what I mean? You can go back, even though you say, oh, let's, you're, let's just give you B for your design result, B. But you go back to say to your parents that, daddy, mommy, even though I got B, I want to tell you, even my result, you got B, but I'm telling you, mommy, I tell you, daddy, I'm so proud of my work because I'm truly satisfied with my work. Because the journey that I work together with my friend, I quit with my lecturers, even though they give me B, but I'm so happy with my works because I'm satisfied. Because I'm sincere that I'm looking forward to improve my works for the next semester. So it will give you the energy to move forward. This yep. is my response. <clears throat> yep. Thank you for your advice, Adrianta. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Welcome. All very useful. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> Any question from our students? Students, don't be shy, please. <laughs> don't, don't be so shy. I'm not going to eat you a while. I'm very, very uh, friendly to all of you. I'm looking forward to see all of you. But don't take up this opportunity to ask me if you have any question. Or if you're shy, you can tag me in my Instagram 
or Facebook, you can ask me. I know all of you in front of your lecturers, you, you, you dare to ask. <laughs> <laughs> you dare to ask, but I'm sure that you can communicate with me through my Instagram and my Facebook. Uh, you can type me there so I can, you know, these many students ask me behind the, the top prints. Yeah. They're shy <laughs> to ask in front of the lecturers. Okay, don't be don't be so so shy. Okay, okay. Yeah, anybody? <laughs> Probably the lecturers one in <laughs> Eric. Yeah. Any question? Just pass me you. <laughs> I can word. see um Mun 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 Chan. Man man in. Man in. Man in. Yeah. Hi, Chan. <laughs> hey, Andrew. How are you, bro? Good, 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 good. Oh good. my God! You hear my talk, ah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just a sharing moment. Sharing yeah, yeah, yeah. moment. It's a, good, it's a very good sharing moment for the students. Yeah. I mean, it's it was a one and a half hours, very good pep talk. Especially this is the this is the oh last lecture God. for the whole semester. Oh, and it's good for, them. <laughs> it's good for I, them. It's good for them. I segan lah dengan muni because uh, yeah, I think no, all no, your no. Uh, your friend your lecturers your all the potential academician they are good lecturers. I can see that. Uh, I think students, you are so lucky that you have all the liners of your your lecturers. You know they are very very inspiring lecturers, very experienced. I wish I become a student in Dallas now because when I see all the lecturers, they inspired me. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, no, it's right. a very good inspirational talk. Very, very good. I mean, the thing is, if if the students can even just present half of how you present, I mean, it's a it's a definite A idea. Wow. I mean, the, the, the way the, the way the way you you you're conveying your information and the con. I mean, the thing is the confidence that you have. I think that's what I think the students must have in a sense that when they present their projects, you just right. cannot go into a project. Um, stand up there and present your work. Uh, I think uh, my work is like that. Uh, 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 um, uh, those those kind, of, uh, um, kind of kills everything. <laughs> so the thing is, you, you you do need to know what you're presenting. You need to know your. I mean, generally the the, the confidence. Uh, and I think, I say like if if they can even have half your confidence in how you presented your work, I think that it's 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 a straight through uh, for them. You, so I think the you, I think a conviction, yeah. Yeah, you you are right, Munim, because I I need to share this recently before the uh, second lockdown. You know, mm. the client asked me to present it the things, and then you know during lockdown, all my team uh, working very constrained. You know lah, you know, or every remote. So when I saw before I present, when I saw the product, oh my, I I thought to myself, oh, this is unfinished product. Yeah, I share with you all of you. Yeah, it's unfinished product, but. The project is so potential. It's like, oh, I cannot miss this opportunity. If not, we're gonna lose the job. Okay, we can see that it's potential. But when I see the team have ready to present is unfinished product. So what did you do? Are you gonna go to your present to your client say uh, to declare that oh, Mr. Client Tan Sri Datu, I'm sorry, this today gonna to present halfway cooked. You are gonna see that definitely the client will say bye bye. We're gonna go another option. But you need to to grab this opportunity. So the strategy come along, you need to plan yourself. So I told to my team, get away all the unfinished product, put aside, and then showcase the, the something to be convinced. You know, architect is like jual minyak. Lah. I, I hope money can understand this. Lah. Money, you know what it means by jual minyak? You know, you need, you know, good to goreng, you know. You need to, how are you going to say malam. this? Lah? Malam. Ah, like working in Pasar Malam, you know, Prince. Have you been to Pasar Malam, Malaysia? Eh? It's like lelong, lelong, lelong. Lai, 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 cipeng, lai, cipeng. Wei ko. Yeah. So say yo, you know, was you know, you do some action, action, and people will buy it. Definitely will buy it. Even though you treat them like a, you know, you sell this pen ten ringgit. Actually, the pen is only two ringgit only. Oh. Can tahan for two days only. But the way you convince people, the smile, the positive energy. Even though in your Hard, you say, oh, yeah, unfinished product, how to present. Put away all negativity. Positive your mind that you need to leave it or leave it or die. You know, you need to get this job. So you showcase the client was so like, wow. You know, the client said, wow, fantastic. Okay, uh, by next week we come meet up in physical. We sign the letter of agreement. Blah 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 blah. We agree to appoint us, and after we end up the online. 
and leave it to my team, all of us will laugh at us and say, wow, <laughs> the unfinished job presentation, but we still can get the job. Why? Because number one, the art of convincing. Number two, confidence that don't go up below to the sky, up to the sky, but at least you know your par. But the third thing is about your objective. You want to get the job. You do your best. So my reflection on my story, same to go all to the students. If you feel that you're not ready to your submission day or your presentation day in front of your lecturers, but you need to be there enough to stand there, proud of yourself, whatever you do your best, but showcase whatever you do, because you need to find your satisfaction. If you couldn't find your satisfaction, I'm sorry, then you start to giving up. Architect cannot giving up very, very, very easy. You need to face the challenge. That's we strong. I'm sure it sounds very easy, but to action is very hard. But that's why I say you have to dream this, then you believe this, then you achieve this. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I think Mr. Liu has a question. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Liu, yeah. A couple of questions that I want to say. Number one, I think your talk is kind of motivational. I think it might be suitable for three years now before they go to six years. It might be uh, to get these students motivated. It's too late, the uh, uh, final year, to tell them this uh, because <laughs> they can't process it. It's very hard to process. This is number one. I want to say uh, the pictures you showed uh, towards the end was the bloopers. It was hilarious. I mean, those cloud, <laughs> the cloud formation, <laughs> the slap, and uh, the ATM machine that was so low. It was just hilarious. That people make such mistakes with journal. Uh, is, I mean, architects can be intelligent, but unfortunately, if the drawing doesn't communicate the intelligence, it go mess with the contractors, you know. So yep. it's all wrong. We have the best intention, but if we don't communicate well, we get the wrong result. That's Correct. Number <laughs> Thing number, number three, good good point you made about EQ, IQ, and uh, SQ. SQ. Now you got SQ, are they yes. EQ? Yes. SQ. So I think in the school, we learn more much about e IQ. Yes. I mean, we're teaching IQ. We can't teach them about EQ and SQ. Correct. It's something Life journey is a life journey. It's something they would learn along the way. Like what you said, you learn something from the guy who's selling the pen, you know, across the table. You pick it up along the way. Yeah. I think what I get from this talk is that uh, architecture is a way of life. It's really a way of life. You, must, you must have this passion. You must have this observance that you carry with you. Otherwise, what use are we? You know, we architects. We're we supposed to change the world. What use are we? Yeah. Uh, if I remember, if I can conclude, uh, I remember my boss said uh, one one of his days. Uh, one of those days, uh, he said that every line you put on paper is money. You know? Every line is money. So yep. don't draw. Don't simply draw a line. <laughs> so make sure the line counts. You know, make sure it's effective. Otherwise, it's just money down the drain. Thank you very much. Uh, are uh, Adriana. Adriana. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Liu. I think for me, if a final year student now hearing this talk, uh, even though you say that it's too late, but for me, I always believe um, inspired by the past, built for the future. So even though you are a final year student, you are, you are what you facing this before, but there is another episode in your life to go ahead. So Take those experience to inspire you to improve yourself, to become better and better for your next episode of your life. This is nothing to be late. Yeah, take it and you know, you observe and learn and wake up in the morning and say, hey, I want to be a better person than yesterday. Okay, nothing to be late. And another thing is about what Mr. Liu has observed, my presentation is more, yes, it's true. The communication, not even the way how you speak, the way how you talk, or the way how you hear, or the way how you listen. The communication line is very important. This is what happened in the building industry, that the way we draw, and then different perception from people, that for example, the contractors, come out a different product, and then, you know, money and sand, you know, talking about cost. So very important that I agree with you. The whatever single line that you draw is cost money. It was cost. 
So the line communication is very, very important. So to be an architect, you have to remember, dear student, you will be a leader in the team. Whatever you talk, you have to be very, uh, you know, to showcase your competency level there. Not only that, with your professional judgment, not only your that, your maturity approach. So people will listen to you. Whatever advice, whatever instruction you give, people will listen to you. But before you want to talk or before you want to give the instruction, there you are. You need to strategize yourself. You need to discover first before you make any decision. You need to ask people. You make sure you are you ascertain the facts first before you make decision. Then you can make decision. Then you can make instruction. So it's not about us only. That's why I don't believe architects as a lone ranger. No. Even lone ranger also got tonto. Ma. Is it? So architect have to work as a team. So that's why how you communicate each other is very, very important. I can, architect can, cannot be so langsi. Architect cannot be so shy guy. Cannot be so malu, cannot be shy. You have to be outspoken. You have to be confident to speak with people and so on. All right? I hope all the best to you, student. Looking forward to see all of you for the final year student. I wish you all the best. I hope that you continue your, is it your part two now? Prince, part Prince? one, part one. Part one. Yeah. I really yeah. hope that you continue your part two, but don't forget while you're waiting for your part two, do, you can register yourself in LAM as an architecture technologist so that you can become a qualified graduate students for part one. At least you've been registered with LAM. Then do participate with PEM because under education, we got a lot of uh, opportunity because student members is free. I really hope to, to make it this next program that I initiate that I share with you as teaser. We will do our best to conduct a Revit class for free for students. I repeat, free for students, a Revit class. Then I do my best to open up for all the academicians membership under PEM for free as well. Take opportunity, but I do my best now because I met these people to, to sponsor us um, and then have to, have to finish this grant by this year. <laughs> so, okay, we keep in touch. Okay, we keep in touch. Do browse me in Facebook, Instagram. I'm always here for everybody. If you shy enough to ask me now because in front of a lecturer, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. But I'm here for you 24-7. I'm okay. Yeah? All the best. Thanks, Ar Architect Advianta, again, on behalf Thank of you. the School Thank of you, Architecture, Advianta. Building and Design. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, probably we can end the session by a group photo from yeah. Jesse. Uh, Jesse also mentioned about Masa. Jesse, you want to? <laughs> I actually Jessie. have a question. Ah, it's a question. not okay. regarding presentation, yeah. but it's more towards our education system itself. Uh. All right. I'm just curious because now a lot of the stuff that we are learning is more towards theory based and also it's more towards design based. So. Do you see that in the future it's possible to integrate real life project with our studio itself so that we can do something for the community since we are all about community, right? Correct. So that's my question. Well, I agree with you, Jesse. Uh, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, I spoke to Telus, uh, Telus, uh, Telus University rep. I think Dr. Veronica is a mm -hmm. representative of PAM Education. And even Miss Delia also very active uh, members. Well, I I love to see. I can declare that Thales University ha has this type of project to relate with the community life project. It was good, and I shared to other IPTA and IPTS that when you when you allow your students speak, uh, you know, working with the community, I think they will filling a gap to share with you, Prince. Yeah, mm. Jesse, you have to remember, Jesse. This is my observation. When the student graduate, even part one or part two, master, eh? then when they start to enter to the building industry, there's a huge gap there. The, the internship still not enough. The internship experience is still, still not enough. There's this gap that you restart from zero to enter the building industry, to the real world out there. Whatever you learn, suddenly you realize that, eh, only 10% that I can utilize from my university. The other 90%? based on the experience, mm. Jesse. 
So I encourage, uh, I think Dallas University had this program. For the students, when you start to involve any program out there, for, for example, example like CSR, when you start to make a live project and then you serve for community, a magical moments that I can share with you, a lot of things that you observe, especially on your soft skill that maybe that what Mr. Liu has said just now, university can go for IQ, the intelligent quotient, but not into detail about EQ, emotional, and also spiritual. But based on your observation and your experience with the relate to the real life project and CSR or serve the community, you will definitely got this the emotional quotient and the spiritual quotient. You start to observe and explore a lot of things, how to communicate with people. Can you imagine that, how to communicate with those disabled people out there, they want to use a RAM with the wheelchair, even though the RAM is already comply with building bylaw, one to twelve, but still not good enough for them to climbing the RAM with the wheelchair. You can feel that. So this is about emotional and spiritual. So I encourage you, agree with you, Jesse, go and explore and involve yourself with the real project, with under uh, Taylor's University or even any PAM program, involve them so that you can grab this opportunity to improve your soft skill. Jesse, encourage you that because uh, to end up my session today, um, to all the students, this is what I believe in my life. It's not because to be a great architect or to be a good architect or even to be a famous architect. Maybe some other people looking for that. But I believe just go to become a healthy and happy architects because we serve for people to help people to become happy and healthy. But before to serve people to become happy and healthy, we need to be happy. We need to be healthy. I believe that. I hope you, you understand what I'm trying to say. Okay? Be happy, be healthy. If you feel down, positive energy, meet people because this is a more friendly. Architecture is for helping people. All right, Prince. Thanks, Thanks Dr. Thank Adrianta. Probably we can end uh, the session with the group photo if you're okay. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, virtual group photo. Jesse, yeah. Okay. Uh, come everybody, turn on your camera. Yeah, right. please switch on your camera. Our last session the last. Yeah. Yeah. Fabian, is it you? Show sure. <laughs> who's <Nicole> that? <laughs> Who else? Uh, is it family face? Anybody Everybody. that I met before? JC, we met before JC, isn't it? Are you in Masa committee? Yeah, yes, Masa. you sound very familiar. Who else? Um, Hanim, is it Hanim? Uh, well, everybody shy. Okay, never mind. All right. <laughs> Who's that? Erin. Erin. Are you in the studio now, Erin? With your friends. Okay, good. Keep it up. Make sure safety, health come first. All right. <laughs> Those that are turning on their camera are most probably in the studio. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'll take the group photo now. One, okay, smile. One, two, three. One more. One, two, three. Okay, done. Done. Yep. Okay, once again, thanks so much. Uh, thank you, Prince. Thank you. I would like thank to say you. thank you to my good friend, my best friend, Manny. <laughs> Manuel Mani, brother. I wish to see you again. And thank you to all the lecturers. Students of Tellers, thank you so much. Yeah, I wish you all you. the best to you. Thank you, Adrian. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Be well. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye. See you soon. Bye bye. See you the next uh, lecture lecture we'll do. series. We'll do. We'll do. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Keep in touch. Bye. Thank you, sir. Bye. Bye, Mani. Thanks, Mani. Yes, bro. <laughs> uh, there are architects called Star Architect. No la, don't start la. I just become <laughs> become pokok pun tak apa. <laughs> but I will say you are the celebrity architect. No, no, no. <laughs> See you guys. Be, be yeah. safe. Bye.